Francisco Creators, Lilu here. Hi, Roy. Uh, hi, Lilu. So good to see you again. Welcome yes. back to Paris. I love it. Oh, I so enjoyed our last conversation, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands, have loved it too. Yes. Uh, we want more of you in France. <laughs> I can't wait that you come and that we create an event for you Absolutely. here. Absolutely. The next step will come soon, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Um, you're a quantum traveler, can we mm -hmm. say that? Yes. You teach that. Mm -hmm. You teach many things online. Okay. You're from Holland. You came mm -hmm. uh, from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. You travel a lot. You have huge project that you're, you're mm -hmm. creating right now. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting conversation to mm -hmm. follow up with our previous video mm -hmm. to see really, you know, how to get organized and centered and in the right space for us to manifest mm -hmm. all those visions that we're having right now because a lot of us are receiving visions mm -hmm. clear visions of where we should go mm -hmm. uh, actually we, we probably been holding that inside of us for a long time like a blueprint mm -hmm. and it's interesting to know, you know what's holding us back like we feel it's really close mm -hmm. things are happening in the world the veil mm -hmm. is lifting up mm -hmm. and uh, you know so I want to have this whole conversation of the in-between. Right. That right. is interesting. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting space, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I call it the tension field. Oh, you know, it's wow. like That's you dense. know the universe is pregnant, but you don't know the delivery date. You know, you're completely in the unknown. And that's for many people a difficult time because this is where most people get stressed. And the more stress you get, the more energy you're sending out, the frequencies that are stopping the delivery. So it's, yeah, it's a struggle for yeah. most people. Ideally, we want no delay. We, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We get that we learn a lot through the delays, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, when when is this whole thing coming right. together? What's right. your sense of the timing, at least on a cosmic level or universal mm -hmm. level since you travel? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, quantumly, and you have a lot of conversation, and your wife also mm -hmm. canalizes information. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. What is your sense of timing in all this in general? Let's put yeah, it yeah. this way. Yeah, we we tend to want to think in years. Uh, it's so many months or, or, or whatever. The answer is it will happen exactly in the right time, which we don't know what is the right time. Mm. And this is for a lot of people to to, to big the big problem. So if I'm sensing um, what what I'm sensing, we need at least two or three years, and then we will reach at some point what's called the bottom. We are now in a chaos spiraling down. You know, everything is being broken off practically. So on one side that's happening. So in this time, we, you can see it like Shiva or whatever, the destruction needs to happen first. If you create something new on a foundation that is not correct, what you create will never be strong. And yes. that's the period where the question for many people is, what do you still have to break down inside of yourself? What is it that you still have to let go? What is holding you tethered uh, or imprisoned in the past? So it is on one side it's coming. On the other side, we need to liberate ourselves from anything holding us back. And that's where the, the tension field is. So as you said, yes, we know we have to... Uh, <laughs> do a lot, but actually it, it's quite simple yeah. because if we align with what we want. So there are two things we need to understand. Number one, we are no longer creating for ourselves. That period is over. I think we got that clear <laughs> message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could say the ego time of creation yeah. is ending, yeah. but the ego will not go easily. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> the ego will fight for its yeah. survival because yeah. The ego is that part of us that fights for survival. Yeah. So you cannot say to the ego, your time is up. The mm. ego will totally sabotage you. So that's on one side, how do you deal with the ego? And the other side is, how do you open yourself to step into the new world? Mm. And in the new world, you have your own creation. So before we were only focused on ourselves. And many spiritual people were focusing on the higher chakras. And that's where we are blocked as well, because if you focus on the higher chakras, you're not focused on the materialization chakras, which are the lower three chakras. So if we look at the chakras from themselves, the first three chakras are the chakras of the three-dimensional reality. Mm -hmm. And that's where the ego is, because the ego is locked into the linear time of life. So the ego's job is to protect you so that you will survive. 
On the other side, we are going there where the ego has no compass. We're going into the unknown. So the, the struggle that we are facing right now is the ego that doesn't know what to do in the new world. Mm. So we need to start to educate the ego uh -huh. so that it can deal with the new world. Mm -hmm. So a big part of the fight is that the ego is afraid that its job is over. Mm -hmm. Its job is to create a safety zone. A lot of people call it comfort zone, but we know that for most people it's not a comfortable zone. <laughs> it's a safety zone. It's a zone like a prison. You can move freely in the zone, mm. but the moment you want to go out of the zone, the ego has all kinds of traps set up for you. So let me give you an example of an ego trap. So a lot of spiritual people are saying we have to learn lessons. Mm -hmm. That's total bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> no, our, our, our essence knows everything. So what do we need to learn that we don't know? Mm. I think we can better say we have to unlearn all the things we think is true mm. to really connect with that, what we know. So we are not into learning lessons. There was a time for that, wasn't there? The time is gone. Okay, I got it. <laughs> That's <laughs> because it is the Pisces time. The time, <laughs> Pisces time is about doing things the hard way. Yes. And we are coming from a programming, not only subconsciously, but even at DNA level to do the hard way. The, the way the hard way and there's still a lot of people who will not like something that's too easy right that they don't feel the value if it's too easy so if we give away something for free which we all do a lot of people don't value it because it's too easy they're still stuck in the struggle mentality the struggle I would say mindset I need to do something in order to get something. But there was so much the energy we've all belonged to for so long. That Absolutely. The, all, especially the light workers and the mm -hmm. people that really wanted to start things. It, it, mm. We were we were pioneering yeah. also and having to go uh, uh, a courant, contre courant, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. really yeah. to paddle yeah, really yeah. hard to, to get there. And, and to change that habit yeah. <laughs> is especially for one. the light works very, very hard because you've been fighting all the time. Of course, uh, you see it as being a pioneer and, and so on. If you look at the percentages, a small percentage, again, a big mass. So that makes the illusion strong that we need to continue fighting. Now, at this moment, we need to learn to surrender, mm. which is a total different game. Yeah. Because what are you surrendering to? Wow. That, that's the whole point. What is surrender to? And, and here's where I think that the new message is, for me, very, very clear, for mm. most people to, to discover, is what means to overcome the power of the ego is also meaning to overcome the power of your identity. Because your identity is what you believe you are, mm -hmm. but it is just a little part of you who have chosen to, I would say, a, a kind of a, a role we play based on our education and our beliefs. And the, the, the destruction of that identity is the toughest thing can, that there is. Can we say that the dreams that we dreamed back then mm -hmm. are actually no longer it because we exactly. have dreamed it from an ego exactly. identity perspective? Exactly. Even spirituality is based on the ego identification. So, if so we look much at, so. Yeah, the spirituality is about me. I want to grow, I want to shine my light, and the I here is the ego. So we need to go from the I to the we, mm -hmm. and we need to align with others who are in the same vibration. Mm -hmm. So it is now time for all of us to focus on what kind of world do we want to create, or what kind of world do we want now to emerge. And in that world, what is the role that I want to play? Because the, the secret to everything is just the uh, high frequencies. And the high frequencies is happiness, is bliss, is joy. So our, our job now is to uh, take care that we're constantly in high frequencies. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn actually uh, to how to switch the button. Mm. There's a button 
that says we're on. If we're on, our eyes are sparkling, we have a big smile on our face. If we're not on, <laughs> we are in the ego world. Uh -huh. And where we, we feel heaviness, we feel struggle, we don't know how to explain or challenges that come. And, and we're struggling with that. Why is my life not the way I think it's gonna be? But now we get the chance to again revisit it, to revisit all the things that we thought to be true. Wow. But we need to destroy all of that and say this was true then. Mm -hmm. We're not judging it as good or bad. It is perfect as it was. But for the new era that's coming, we need to change. Mm. And we need to become aligned with that, what's happening right now. And it's, it's nothing to do and in with... Tune. Mm -hmm. We could say even get in tuned with Absolutely. what's happening because Absolutely. it's really a matter of frequency Absolutely. and vibrations and Absolutely. going with yes. that, wherever that takes us. Less, yeah. It's less of us to create visions, mm -hmm. it's more of us to receive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's uh, or tuning in, as tuning we say, in. tuning in to what makes us truly happy. And we need to distinguish, uh, number one, the happiness of the ego, which is hmm. about, you know, uh, influence, power, being me, seen, being understood. Yeah, the whole game of that, which we are all part of. We all are in that game to a new game. And the new game is how can I shine my light? How can I radiate? How can I wake up every day? How can we day? shine our yeah, light? Yeah, yeah. How can we wake up every mm -hmm. day feeling, wow, another day to co-create something bigger than ourselves? And it requires from us to rethink everything we do, how we mm -hmm. spend our money, where, where we put our attention, what is our intention. So my advice... How we eat. Everything. To go back to a blank slate. To start now to take your time to just think about what is it that's happening right now and what is my role in this. So I have for everyone the message that if you are awake, if you're living this time and you're, let's say, a light worker, then it's very clear you're part of the new world. But in order to enter the new world, it is like, it feels like you have to go to a membrane. A membrane mm. that is so ultra fine that the heavy vibrations cannot go through that. Mm -hmm. So you need to let the heavy vibrations out there. You need to actually be born again and reinvent yourself as a true being of light. So stripping off everything, stripping every layer. Off. And, and what we have learned in the past is that stripping off is difficult. Mm -hmm. What we need to learn, it is not difficult mm. in this time. In the past, yes. But in this Got time, it. it's just a decision we need to, to make. Now, when we make the decision, is now we need to practice that when I make a decision, I'm 100% congruent with the decision. So it means that my mm -hmm. ego and my subconscious mind needs to be aligned with my decision. If it's not... No faking. It will, it will, yeah, it will fight us. So it, it's also about looking at your level of authenticity. This is crucial. Are you truly resonating with your authenticity? When we talk about authenticity, there are different things we can talk about. One is the, um, I would say, the power to be vulnerable and to speak your truth from, from that vulnerability, from that humility, from just being in the human part, part, part of you. Because we, we are always divided by a human part and a light part. Or human part also need a place. It's not about just being light. So for me, vulnerability is acknowledging your human part. Saying, okay, it is a part of me, if I like it or not, that is there and it's struggling. But the I that's talking is not the I of the human part. It's the I of the other part. So we need to embrace our human cells from our light cells. Mm -hmm. and, and the most important thing that we can do is have compassion, is to be kind, to be loving and caring about the human part. Because the human part is the one that is struggling the most right now. When, when you say that and you mention that, I envision people that did near-death experience, mm -hmm. you know, and that are facing uh, the source mm -hmm. and have no uh, judgment of the source, mm -hmm. yet they have to be, uh, source knows it and yeah. can sense everything. And you cannot hide, you cannot fake it. You cannot, you just, you show up as you are, mm -hmm. and, and the, so there is no more hiding. Exactly. And there's a difference, the ego is into doing. Yeah. Give me a plan, 
tell me what to do and I'll go do it, I'll go get it. And the ego will do everything to go to the goal. We have to now move to being. Mm. So from human doing, we know to really become a human being. But human being is where we allow our true selves to express itself in the human form. Mm -hmm. So we have to practice being human, but from the light perspective. Yes. And once we, we understand that, we, we move into the next part is how we go to the membrane. And the membrane is, is quite easy. You recognize That's an interesting yeah. thing, yeah. Every time we are triggered, every time we feel down, every time we're emotional, every time we have a limiting belief, we're being human in the shadow part of the human. We're not shining our light, right? We're not expressing what we are. So the human form needs to become the expression, the loudspeaker, so to say, mm. of the light form. And for that, we need to go all the way down into the chakras. We need to actually focus now on the first three chakras and not on the higher chakras. Interesting. Because that's here where our struggle is. You see, if we focus too much on, oh, everything is beautiful and that, then we're disconnected from our shadow side. But I thought most human beings on earth were actually focusing so much on here and not True. on there. Although spiritual people were focusing on there rather and than here. here. So is it switching over Yeah, now? the spiritual people <laughs> now have to go lower. Because in the lower is where the shadows are. And, and the biggest mistake that you can make is say everything is clear, everything is happening for a reason, everything happens for me. We, we get all these, I call them, <laughs> slogans and mantras that are not allowing us mm. to go deep. Mm -hmm. Everything is love, everything is energy. We repeat that over and over, mm. but we're not doing the work. The yes. work is simple, is to look at your shadows and to say, this I do no more. I am light and I embrace my shadows from light. So what I teach people is you need to disassociate yourself in two parts. One part is the part that needs love, kindness, care. That's your human part, which is the conditioned part. It is not what you are. So now the, the part that you are needs to look at the part that you are not, embrace that part, and make that part a totality where both are there. But from the standpoint is we have a shadow side and it's not about destroying that, but it's loving it and taking care of it. And then once we love that part, we truly understand self-love. Until now, we're trying to do self-love from the shadow. Yeah, the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> right? We're trying to work on, on loving yourself. And a lot of people struggle there. And, and because they struggle, they end up in judging themselves and then you're struggling more. Yeah. But if you come from the light part and you just look at the human part and you say, oh, you're struggling, let me love you more. Mm. Let me embrace you more. Let me talk with you more. So we need to actually become the coach of a human part. We yes. need to guide the human part, explain what is happening, because that human part represents our ego part as well. So this is the where we are and what we teach people is we call the sparkle of life is how to sparkle again because if we're not sparkling we are in the shadow mm -hmm. so we, we have to start in the morning already with sparkling mm. and then to set our intention for the day to keep our sparkle actually on. i want to mention because i love the meditation that we have mm -hmm. recorded mm -hmm. because i yeah. recorded your voice yeah, yeah, in yeah, french yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. i know this video will be in english and french yeah, but yeah. on rory martina there yeah. is some free meditation yeah, powerful yeah. one including the one i read mm -hmm. and, and uh, did on your site yeah, that, yeah. that is for free mm -hmm. and that where you create your day Absolutely. you know and you really set into yeah. this spark right. and mm -hmm. i know other ones are coming <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, i can't yeah, wait yeah, to have <laughs> but it's such a powerful yeah, yeah. So kick start, start for the yeah. day yeah and and so when we look at that is uh, we talk about creating but actually we're aligning the the whole thing is about aligning with the highest frequencies over and over and over again and to know that you will be tested mm. you will be challenged mm. because that's the period where we are in that's the membrane we're trying to go through right now so the membrane is mirroring back to you 
Are you aligned or not? If you're not aligned, you're not sparkling. If you're not sparkling, you need to do something to get aligned. So it starts first. Although it's not about doing, you're mm -hmm. saying. So it's really about yeah, shining the light. Yeah, it's constantly going back to you. It's having consciousness about right. it, bringing yeah. consciousness to it. It is constantly returning to you. Yeah. So the moment you discover I'm not aligned, the only thing you have to do is align and then you're back into being. So it's the being part. And now people say, yes, but if I'm being, then I'm not doing anything. Well, it's the way you do things is different. So when you're being, you're constantly asking your being, how can it be of service? Because it's now about being of service to that what is coming. Mm -hmm. So and we need to learn to tune into that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a process where a lot of people are stuck because the, the, the head has its own program. Yeah. So the shadow side is still talking to you from the shadow side. Yeah, and, and we're still in between the manifesting and the absolutely, dreaming absolutely. state. And we constantly need to go to the being state where we feel that we're sparkling. And once we're sparkling, then we go back into the world and say, okay, how can I use my energy to sparkle, I would say radiate, my energy into each environment that I go. Yeah, you, you're creating this huge project in Amazon. Mm. I can mm. I can say that, and mm. you're 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 manifesting. You're mm. in the process of manifesting mm. uh, billions mm -hmm. of dollars mm. to mm. make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, how are you? How are you in this in between? I mean, there's yeah. still the vision that you receive. <laughs> I'm going back to the beginning yeah, of yeah, this yeah, conversation. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. still this vision that you have. Mm -hmm that you know is happening and and is that happening and how are you dealing with Absolutely. the non-happening when there is no signs exactly. yet, exactly. although you know your heart is there right. and that you know this is gonna happen. So it's a lot of trusting mm -hmm. and a lot of moving mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. and beingness mm -hmm. without imposing that mm -hmm. original vision or do you still hold on to that vision? Yeah, no, the vision has only become stronger in, in that sense that as time progress you get more, I would say, feedback or signs from the universe. Because when, when we are creating or manifesting or attracting, is there are a couple of things we need to understand about attracting. Is number one, is what we can call magnetism. Mm -hmm. Magnetism is the intensity of the alignment with the frequencies that correspond with what you want. Okay, so it, it's constantly tuning in to stay on those frequencies of what you are manifesting. And we get feedback from what they call the three-dimensional reality, which is an illusion that things are going slow, that you know, things are not working, it's not happening yet, and, and so on and so on. So the, the, the big tension field is how do you manage the in-between time mm -hmm. from the moment you started on your dream and, and your, your creation process to the moment it, it comes there. And I call this uh, the preparation time. So, and, and it's very funny is that many times I thought I was ready. <laughs> yes, I'm ready, come on. What are you guys waiting for? I'm ready, I'm here. Yes. Nothing happens. Yes. Okay. And then you go back deep in and then you discover you're not ready. Yes. So I've given up saying I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> So I'm tuning more in now into the next level. So if I go to the process, so how the process begins, the process always begins with what is it? What is it that you want to manifest? And the, the part of the process is the why. And yes, I want to whatever. And everything is good. I want to manifest the house. Okay, why do you want to manifest this house? I want to manifest this. So the why is more important than the what. Because... Everything is possible in the field. So I need to understand the why, because the why is what keeps me in the game. Mm -hmm. If my why is strong enough, I will overcome any challenge, any setback, any of that, because my wife is, the, is my drive. So when I turned 70, which was September in 2023, I turned 70, it was a full moon. I said, okay, so obviously <laughs> it's an important on. one. I'm right? ready. <laughs> yeah, 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 so I'll go again. <laughs> and I went into this um, Temascal, which is what, ah, what some yeah. people call the sweat lodge, where it is dark, and it is called the womb. It is actually an indigenous tradition where you go back to the womb, and it's incredible because it's very at some point it can become very uncomfortable to be in the womb it's yes. like it gets hot it is dark it is 
moisture everywhere and you're there in preparation for being reborn so i went through this process and then after uh, i would say three hours in the womb finally it's the reborn you go into a lake and then uh, the lake is ice cold which also is a really nice representation being born you go from a safe place into a place where there's a lot of lights it's cold and so on and so on. and that's where i said okay i am releasing myself from everything i've accomplished in my life and i'm starting now over to accomplish something that's not for me mm. everything i've accomplished was somewhere somehow even though i did work to help other people and support them and give a lot of workshops, lectures, books, but still there was a big part that was for me. It was my search for my place in the world. And basically that stopped there. And now it's not anymore about that search of the place in the world. It is now, how can I be a facilitator for the new world, which is totally different although concept. You're, although, although there's a part that is proving that, th mm. that this is possible. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. So that's still attached Absolutely, to yeah, some yeah. kind of result and identification. Absolutely. Yeah, there's that identification, but everything I identified with was based on what they called the old way of working. Mm. It was still the program. I have to go out there. I need to prove myself. Mm. I need to conquer. I need to do this mm. more, 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 more which when you bring it back, even though... The young way. Yeah, yeah, the purpose is good, the way it is done is not self-sustaining, right? If you keep doing that, it just costs you more energy. Right now it's about doing something for something bigger, and the energy you get back is more. It yes. is like lighter, because the moment you notice that you start worrying, you're off. You need to go back to... no. Everything goes according to plan. This is my mantra. Okay? Yeah. Everything is going according to plan, even though I don't know the details of the plan. So I need, so you were talking about trust. Yes, trust, easy or difficult, is coming from knowing that I am listening and following whatever is given to me. Mm -hmm. I don't resist. Uh, if, if they tell me, uh, for example, to come to Paris, it was not convenient to come to Paris, all right? It was like, oh, you have all the things and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you go in and you ask, is this part of what needs to happen? So the decision you take is not coming from, is it convenient or not? Is it, it is mm. just coming, it's not convenient. That's the truth. But the message is, yes, you have to be there. Mm. And how does reason. a yes feel for you? Mm. A yes feel for me like, okay, then I can forget about all the things that are not convenient. I will make it happen. Mm. It brings in new energy mm. before you only see the challenges. Okay, I have to do this. this, this. No, this. So, so then you take the decision. Mm -hmm. And once you take the decision, if it's congruent, you align with it, everything is easy. Mm. And then the strange thing happens is that things happen in a way that supports you to go. And then I go deeper, and I go deeper and say, okay, what, what else is important? Well, I'm going to Paris. What is Paris? Paris is the city of love. So let me go there to the city of love. With a to picture? Align, <laughs> yeah, to align to the city of love. Yes. To, to really go in the So it becomes a metaphorical journey. So I'm here in the city of love talking to you, which is the purpose of being here. So we have to talk about love. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no other way. Yes. Right? And, and so when, when we are aligning with being, and it is we are aligning with the highest frequencies of our being, which again is pure love and peace. Yeah. So we need to align with that constantly. And any time when uh, something brings it out of that state, we need to ask ourselves questions. The first question is, what is the truth? Mm. Because often we have an opinion or we have a belief and we often think that's the truth. But we need to step back when there's a challenge and say, oh, what's the truth? Okay, this and this is happening right now. That's the truth. It's a fact. Okay? And the truth is, this triggers me. Mm. It's another fact. Mm. And then I go, okay, if it triggers me, there's something in me that is triggered. And I need to go to that part of me, which I call the human part, and say, okay, something in you is triggered. Let's look at it. Let's, let's find a way to heal it together. Right? So we could do a, a process. The process is, for, is quite simple because the process always brings us back into a part of our past. Mm. 
Mm. And, and the only thing we need to do is go back to any part time in the past. I normally tell people to go back to the moment you were very small, either after birth or two, three years old, and to have a conversation with a three-year-old and explain everything about life to three-year-old over and over and over. And what people do not know, because a lot of people think this is fantasy. Mm. All right, so in the three-dimensional reality, mm. it is fantasy because we're not in the three-dimensional reality. But the fact that we're not in the three-dimensional reality doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Because if we look at what is the three-dimensional reality, the three-dimensional reality is nothing else that we have said that everything that is matter, everything that is vibrating at a slower rate is three-dimensional. We've decided that. And we're perceiving that to our three-dimensional senses. But that's not what we are. That's the human part of us. And we do not only function on the human part because we are multidimensional. So when I have a conversation with a part of me that maybe in time, in the linear time, it's back, but in the higher dimension, everything is happening at the same time. So I am intervening in everything that's happening at the same time, and I'm creating a new timeline in everything that's possible, where my past is changing in such a way that it's supporting who I want to become. Yes. So most people go to the future and say, hey, this is the future, and I need to do this, I need to do that. No, you need to go back and instruct yourself, and then the change moves forward. Mm. It's a much easier way than to struggle and try to change things on willpower. The same way that it seems like we um, are, are quickly getting back to past lives to pick up some of our gifts there mm -hmm. yeah. and activating that. So it's as much as reprogramming as releasing mm. also and, 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 and remembering and re, I mean, you know, reprocessing mm -hmm. or, or getting this gift back again. Yeah, the only difference is that when we look at it from quantum, there's no past life. Yes. There is yes. an experience yes. in all there is, and that experience has created a memory in all there is, and we are resonating with this memory. Mm -hmm. So, and we can resonate with the memory because there's something in there that needs to be healed, mm -hmm. and we can think we need to go to the past life to heal that, mm. but we can heal it any place in yes. time. I remember we're having this. Right? Yes. We Thank don't need to go to us. that past life yes. thing. So if, if I make... It's happening as, right now. Right. If I make as a metaphor, uh, let's say the three year I like to work with my three-year-old, as a representation of everything that needs to be changed, I don't need to go into the past life. The second part of the three-year-old is that we all know that when we look at ourselves when we're three years old, all the potential is still there. We have not embarked on a journey where we've been told and educate and program that we are worthless, we are not good enough, we don't know enough, we're not smart enough, blah, blah, blah. We're still fresh. So we're still connected to our potential. And when we connect to our potential, we're connected to the fifth dimensional realm where everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So for me, the three-year-old could can also be the baby. It doesn't really matter. But you choose some place in you. And, and I, I like to go to three year old because I still have a, a nice picture of me being three year old. Ah, so I can really I can really relate to that oh, yeah. to that face that's so innocent, so full of light. When I look at the picture, I'm just I'm enthusiastic about life. Yeah. I have no clue what's going to happen. <laughs> no idea how much shit will happen in my life. But I know one thing, life is going to be great, right? Yeah. So if I connect to that, yeah. I'm connected to the fifth dimension. Right. You see, that's all is so simple. Mm. And we need to keep going back. And what happens when we keep going back, we are slowly but surely changing the timeline we go back to. Mm. So if, if we still are struggling in the now, is because we are still connected to many things in the past that was difficult. Right. But my three-year-old doesn't think anything is difficult. Yeah. It believes everything How is possible. How about the ancestors? Well, the, the, the point of the ancestor is that, again, we put it there. Yes. Okay. But our DNA, it reflects part of that as well. So in the DNA of the three-year-old is everything again there. So in other words, um, the difficulty with the ancestors is that we need to ask again, what is our job to do? 
the only job I have to do for my ancestors is liberate myself. If I liberate myself, I break the karmic chain of the ancestors. Because everything that happened, and then some people say it's until seven generations ago, mm -hmm. that is not resolved, still has to be resolved by the one with the highest, I would say, uh, frequency. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the family, if I look at my family, and we have a big family, mm -hmm. we were nine children and not just seven left, is the one that has the highest frequency is connected to what's called the guardian of the ancestor, which is a phoenix. So the metaphor for the past life ancestors is the phoenix. So we normally we add that in it as well at a later stage. But for most people, that's not the first stage. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what is happening in, in the ancestor line? In the ancestor line is happening all that we need for the assignment for this life. Mm. So it's not good or bad. Mm. Everything that happened there is for this life. Yeah. Because otherwise I would not have chosen these ancestors. Yes. But by being in the time that we are right now, I'm also offering my ancestors, uh, let's say, a new healing. Because all that is in my three-year-old. I don't have to go back again in time because the three-year-old holds all of that. So everything I'm healing in the three years old, I'm healing for all my ancestors mm. as well. Because what I found is that, and there's some exceptions that we'll, we'll discuss happily, is that everything is there. Okay, It's only in our mind we, we kind of break it down, we label it. This life, past life, ancestors, and so on. But in the quantum field, it's just frequencies. There's nothing else than that. Right. And, and uh, if, if we look at what's going on, is we can say there's a, a kind of a missing balance between light and non-light. Some people call it the non-light. They call it the darkness. It's just a label. Okay? But let's call it the non-light, because it's a better name than darkness. So what is non-light? Non-light is there where the light doesn't shine. Okay, now just imagine where the light doesn't shine, things happen yeah, that you don't want to see, right? So there's things happening there that we normally don't want to mix ourselves with because we are afraid of the darkness. So, and why are we afraid of the darkness? Because we believe that darkness can affect us. But the darkness can only affect you on the level that darkness is inside of you. Yes. And when you shine your light on the darkness, there is no darkness. You just discover that what I am afraid of is just something in my mind. Now, it can feel real. If, if, if I have, I'm sure you face that. Yeah, absolutely. I have people who come and they had curses in their ancestor line, which is a great label for nothing else, for non-light. Okay? So how do you solve a curse, a curse with light? Okay, so then we have all these things that we see, uh, demons and this and that, all kinds of labels we put on a lot of things. But again, it's non-light. I am not afraid of non-light because I will shine my light on non-light. Mm -hmm. So what is shining your light on non-light? Even if there was something as bad as a demon, the demon can only affect you in your shadow side. Mm -hmm. It cannot affect me in my light side. No. So I need to know, and, and I, I watched this movie, it was the, what's called The Exorcist of the Pope, and mm -hmm. Kurt Russell was playing in it, a priest, and he was fighting a demon, and the demon was attacking him on his weaknesses, the things that he had done that he felt guilty for. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing the demon can do. It can only try to find mm -hmm. things that you feel bad about, mm -hmm. things that you are ashamed about, things that you feel guilty about, things that you felt you didn't do right. The two lowest frequencies is guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. And the demon does nothing else than bring you down into slow de uh, lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. And there it has power over you because now you're in the darkness. Now the demon, now you're from the demon. The demon can do anything with you because you're afraid. But if you are in your power and you are light and you're just smiling and, and you're in loving, your heart. Yeah. Hmm? 
And in your heart. In your heart, and you're smiling at whatever the demon says, and you just have your mantra, I am light and I love all there is. I'm shining my light on the darkness or the non-light. Then the demon has no power over you. And for, that's for everything. Our light is so strong that nothing can stop it. And why is very simple. The biggest fear in life is fear of death. And people translate death. fear. Yeah, death. People translate in fear of rejection, fear of public speaking, all kinds of things. We only have one fear, the fear of death. And the fear of death is just one thing, is the ego. The ego doesn't want Not to die. Not existing anymore. Yeah. So we need to train our ego. I am an immortal. I'm eternal. Deal with it. <laughs> you know? I am not human. I have a human body. I'm using the human body. I'm bringing my light in the human body. And I need to be so sure that I am that, that my ego has no power over me. Because the ego will also, I call the ego a little demon. Not a big one, a little demon. And it's the demon of duality. Duality is about light and non-light. That's all it is. It's not about masculine and feminine like many people believe. It's more yang and yin. Yin is this, yang is that. No, there's nothing more than that. And it is there for one reason only. We have that, that we need to discover that we are light and there's nothing to fear. Mm. If we become the light that we are, we no longer fear death. We no longer fear darkness. And we're free to be ourselves. And now we can shine our light. It's a, it's a cycle. And some smart people, I think it was Campbell, said it's the hero's journey. But the hero's journey is the ego's journey. Hmm. That was great for the past. Yes. But for now, we don't need to be a hero anymore because hero is again, about force. Yes. And light is about power. Yeah. So when I'm in my power, I am magnetized and I attract. That's what resonates with my power. Everything I want, need, or desire will come to me because I'm resonating with my yeah. light. So that's the But let's go back part. to the we, because it's really yeah. about the we. So mm -hmm. even 100%. here we're saying I, but mm -hmm. it's really the same conversation yeah, yeah. with the we. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You see, the I... Which gives us so much more, you know... Yeah, yeah. See, see, our struggle is the I. It's the I, because the I stands for identification, right? So if we now go back to how to trans... Let's say to transcend the I, mm -hmm. it's very simple. We know, now we are aware of what the I really is. The I is the one part, call it the ego, call it shadow, whatever, is where the duality is made. It's in the I. If we look at the brain structure, the I is on the left side. We're trying to give meaning to life. The, the right side is where we are connected to everything, to the, to the universe. We call it the creative side. So we need, when we go into the I side, there's always a left brain. The right brain is the we brain. And I remember seeing uh, something, I think on YouTube or somewhere, of a neuroscientist who had, I think it was a, a stroke in the left brain. Yes. And because of that, could not identify with the I anymore. And was totally in the energetic. It was a lady, yeah, it was long yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah exactly, it was in the we. Mm. So we, the I is the ego part of the mm. brain. And that corresponds with the lower chakra. So what we need to constantly do is set the intention that we are going to transcend that. So part of that is first a written intention. You need to uh, put it in time. So you, you can say, okay, what's a reasonable time for me to overcome TI? Hmm. Okay, you can say, okay, by or before December 31st, 2000, whatever, I have overcome my ego and I'm completely aligned with my light. And I am being that magnificent being that is radiating my light in the world. So you need to start first with a commitment for what you're going to do. And when you write something down, this is very, very important. And I'm not talking about on the phone. I'm talking about writing on paper. It is like signing a contract. So, or... It, it, uh, Rewriting the story. Right. The subconscious mind takes the written word on paper seriously, more seriously than anything else. And that has to do with the tradition of the to uh, more than a thousand years that writing was the whole thing. So that's still in our DNA. But the writing also is a portal. And a portal is, is something very complex for most people to understand. 
So we can, we can create portals. So if I want something new in my life, I need to create a portal for it to come into my life. Mm. But there are also portals on, uh, on the planet Earth. We can go, we can call this like these power places you go through. And those places are portals that can go to many different places. A lot of people do not know if I go there, where do I want to go? But you need to feel where can this portal bring you. So you go to a power place, could be like a pyramid or things like that. People feel it, but not everyone is using it. Like now became, the pyramids in Bosnia became very, very popular. A lot of people go there, but it's like tourists. Where do you go? What's uh, your power spot? My power spot is the Amazon. When I'm in the Amazon, I feel totally connected. It's like the whole nature is talking to me and it's also giving me assignments for the planet. It's the Amazon give me as an assignment to bring the uh, natural medicine of the Amazon to the world. So we, we see the Amazon as the lungs of the world, but the Amazon wants to be the pharmacy of the world. It's totally different when we see the Amazon as a precious place where we have all the natural ways of healing the body, and, and we can go very far into that, in even healing the mind, the, the emotional body, all of that can be healed just with plant medicine. And we can also make spiritual journey, like many people are doing ayahuasca journeys and all those kind of things. The Amazon is not only the lungs, but it's also the teacher, and it's also the healer. And my assignment is to bring uh, the, the plants to the world, but to do it in a way that it will be easy for the world to accept. So the assignment that I have is to build a, a kind of research center in the Amazon, do the research in all these plants in a clinical setting where we... Because you're a doctor, let's just yeah, yeah, remind yeah. people your oh, background. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> we haven't yeah, done I've... it the last time, but not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, sure. I'm a, I'm a holistic medical doctor, so I'm qualified to speak about disease and those things, but also qualified to treat people in, in certain ways. So we need to do the research to show in the three-dimensional reality that these plants are better than the chemicals that we're using. And that's not only better, the time of healing is shorter and the price of healing is less. So the goal is not to change medicine first. That, that will take more time. That is what that's, will happen in the new world. The goal is to create places where people can go and number one, get healing, depending on you know, whatever they, they need to be healed. Is it cancer, is it rheuma, arthritis, everything like that. And to make that a journey where they're guided. It, a healing for me is a journey. It is not about physical recovery. It is about a, a spiritual journey in yourself to discover why happened to you what happened to you. And once you discover that, your life transforms. You know, I just was interviewing uh, the, uh, earlier today uh, a shaman, and she lives in, in England, and she wrote about the spirit of diseases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I find that quite interesting mm -hmm, and wanted mm -hmm. to hear about it mm -hmm, just yeah. just one moment with mm -hmm. you, even for going a little bit off track. But we're speaking mm -hmm. about diseases. Mm -hmm. Do you believe there is a spirit as much as there is spirits in plants? and? And, 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 you know, uh, and all kind of spirits exist. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's such a thing as the spirit of diseases that we could talk to and communicate and learn from their message and release mm -hmm. once we heard yeah. their message? Yeah, it is how you label things. So you can label that as a spirit, for example. This is what, it's just a, a label. And labels we use to simplify things and to make it a metaphorical way to do things. So, for example, we can also call certain emotions demons. Yeah, so, for example, uh, the lack of self-worth is a demon that will destroy your life because you will never get the light that you are. You will always be tr thrown back by the demon. So the way I see it is very parallel to that, is that um, we have a consciousness, number one. Everything has a consciousness, number one, uh, because it's the consciousness that keep the blueprint together. So a stone has a consciousness to be a stone. And a stone has experience. A stone can be very wise. Now, a stone can also have frequencies. So if we talk to a gemstone or we talk to a rock, are two different conversations. Now, the only problem is that most people think they're 
it's fantasy. But if you can tune into consciousness, everything is conscious. But also each organ has a consciousness. So I can also tune in into the consciousness of my liver and ask my liver, what do you need right now from me? But if there's a disease, a disease also has a consciousness. It's a split off of yourself. And when a disease becomes material, like a tumor or an inflammation, now it is a stagnation of energy with the consciousness. So that, let's, let's take cancer. It has cancer. materialized. Right, let's take cancer. Uh, so most people do not understand that cancer does not happen like that. One day you wake up and you have cancer. It's a process that's been going on sometimes for years. And in that process is always a beginning point. And the beginning point is always a combination of things. So on one side, we have made a decision that, for example, we're not going to uh, speak our truth anymore. We made a decision that it's okay for other people to go of my boundaries. We made a decision it's safer for us to be in a safe place than to stand up for ourselves. That moment of a decision was the moment that we blocked something in ourselves. And that something in ourselves, that shadow side, is starting out to live and is trying to give as a message back, you need to change your decision. This was not the decision. So that, so the disease becomes now the messenger. And when we communicate with the messenger, it doesn't matter what we call it, a consciousness, a spirit, a demon, whatever. These are just labels. They're not so important, but we need to have a label to engage into that feedback loop from what do I need to change. So my definition of any form of disease is that it is about introspection to find out what is the meaning of this disease, what do I need to change in myself. And it could be something simple as lifestyle. Sometimes the lifestyle is not supporting that what we are in, or not supporting a human being. It can also be some, uh, something emotional I need to change. It can be some trauma that I have not healed in the past. It could be something else where I'm, I took something from my parents, for example, from my mother, that I carry in me, but it's not mine. And that what's not mine becomes now like a cancer in me that I need to release because I need to give it back. And it could be something from the family and the ancestors, all of those things as well. And when we dive into that, so for example, um, I, I worked a lot with people with cancer and they created something called the cancer warrior mindset. Even though it's called warrior mindset, mm -hmm. it's not about war. Mm -hmm. For me, a warrior is not about war, it's about an attitude. A warrior is the young side of a healer. The peaceful warrior, more yeah, like Dan yeah, Mailman was talking about. Yeah, but peaceful warrior is the combination of the healer and the warrior. Mm -hmm. So actually, I work with four archetypes. We have the healer, the warrior, we have the visionary, and we have the teacher. So these are the archetypes we work with. So most people have a strong healer archetype, right? And the shadow side of the healer is often self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's the shadow of the healer. Mm. So I have to give at a price instead of give that is giving back. Mm. So that's the shadow side. The warrior has an, another shadow side. The war, and that is what the patriarchy stands for now. It's the shadow side of the warrior. It's more, much more masculine in energy, but when it's not in balance, because it's always about balance, it abuses its power. Mm. So I'm strong, and I'm the most powerful one here, so everything here is mine. You are serving me. That's the, the warrior side, and that leads to what has created now the situation we are in, mm. is an over, um, I would say, balanced warrior side, mm -hmm. and the, uh, a low healer side. Mm. So, uh, and those two needs to be in balance, mm -hmm. right? So if we look at indigenous tribe, the, the, the feminine power, the yin power, controls the yang power. It is the feminine power that has to say to the yang power, no, it's enough. We have enough wood. We have enough meat. You can rest now. Because the masculine side goes, keep going. Okay, we conquer, we go. Oh, we're going to catch more animals. We're going to do this more. It doesn't stop because it doesn't have a break in it. It's the other side that needs to say we have enough. Mm -hmm. And that is in every person the same. It is not... Uh, you're too masculine and too feminine. It is that you're not in balance 
You, you need to be balanced in both. And this is also part of this new time that's coming. There are a lot of women now and, uh, that are blaming to men. Mm. But I ask always the women, who were the mother of the men? Who was, who were, who was educating the men to be what they are today? So you yeah, need to a lot take, of healing has to do with the feminine, no? Absolutely. You need to take your responsibility in yeah. that as well. And, and you need to be in balance in yourself. But for the masculine, the same. Yes. We need to create balance there too. Yes. Because as the feminine balance is shifting, now the, the masculine balance is getting more out of balance. Mm -hmm. Right? So we need to both shift. It's not about the, the women and the men. Mm -hmm. It's about the yin and the yang. And each yeah. one of us needs to shift. And there's no one to blame. Because blaming is still part of the ego saying that was wrong. Everything served its purpose exactly according to the plan. Yes. And the plan was that the whole planet should go first into the full power of the darkness. In the full power of the darkness, it can now be split up into two worlds. And most people do not understand that the world in the whole galaxy has a role in itself as well. So we are not talking only about planet Earth. We're talking about the galaxy. The whole galaxy is moving into a new balance. And we are part of that. And for those people who are interested in the extraterrestrials, a lot of extraterrestrials are here. Which side are we go on? Where are we going to go? One way of the darkness would be self-destruction to nuclear war. And that has to be prevented at all costs. So we are now at the point where we have to become light so that the world emerges in a higher vibration. So we're living on a planet now that's going to a shift. Humanity is a byproduct. We just happen to be here when the planet is being reborn. So we are not the ones causing the planet to reborn. That some people believe that might be. Yeah. We are the ones responsible. Well, then it's more the, of the ego. Yeah. The planet will go through its transformation with you or without you. Now, the point is, and if you don't transform, in 100 years from now, humanity is extinct. Period. It's done. The planet will continue in a million years from now. Everything on the planet is beautiful again. You see, there's no time there. So we are now at something that's not happening in the three-dimensional reality. It happens on many, many different mm. levels. And what I found with, with my work mm. is that the planet is actually as a consciousness that goes to the seven, eight, and nine dimension. And so the planet is shifting now. And we can shift with the planet. And when we shift... She knows it, how to do it. She knows how to do it. She has done this before. Yes. Right? So she's shifting and is inviting you, do you come along on my ride? And if you're not, fine. So just last question, because this is an amazing conversation, <laughs> actually. I'm, I'm glad this is a two-part video, because I think this is long enough for a two-part video, which is exciting. We'll have you for two weeks and more. Um, and then I forgot my question. Great. No, yes, people activate. Some people, you know, activate places in the, in the world and mm -hmm. the earth. And, then, and yet we're having this conversation mm -hmm. that the planet knows how to do it. So mm -hmm. what's your take on this? Well, it is... Because a lot of light workers are working yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. Well, you understand that um, the planet will go to its transformation. That's not the question. The, the thing that happens, what the light workers are doing, is they're helping the transformation. I, I can call them like they are the midwives. midwives. The yeah, midwives facilitators. are there. You know, yeah, the, they're going to be a bird. No, we, we don't know what bird is going to be. Yeah. It's going to be an easy bird or not. So the more we have these light beings or light workers, midwives, the easier to That's a great place be. to be, actually, yeah. throughout this whole conversation that we have. We're all midwives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I always exactly. saw it, interviewing <laughs> yeah. as being a midwife. I've yes. often said it, actually, Absolutely. to interviewees. So if you choose to be part of what's coming, you become officially a light midwife. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. We can all do that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roy. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this conversation mm -hmm. and to have it out in several languages and that, and uh, and to have you uh, one day come over in France will be a real pleasure. I know there is books on the on the go and yeah, yeah. movies and many things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, a, and a huge project manifesting right now in the Amazon also. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. It's, it's a real pleasure. pleasure. Thank you for coming for all no. the way 
from Paris. <laughs> and, uh, it's a great place to be and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, always great. And thank you so much, my delicious co-creators. Please share this video as much as you can. I definitely think, uh, yeah, much is going on and this is exactly the information that, that we should share wildly. So thank you so much for your trust, for your, for your loyalty, for your love. That's the most important, love. And you're a great light worker. You've got so much light and let's move forward. Thank you so much. Much love. Bye.